Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another awesome weekly market forecast with me, Tremaine. And in today's one, guys, we're going to be going through a couple of pairs, the DXY, Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss Franc, AUD USD, and NZD CAD. Now, all of these pairs, guys, obviously, there is a discretion. It is December. The markets are moving kind of weird. So what we need to be doing, especially this month, more than any other month, is paying attention to what the current price action is doing. And we need to be reactive to the current price action. So going with that being said, guys, going into our DXY, we're on our weekly. And what we can see about the weekly is that we've got this reaction here from this area, obviously in this move to the downside, where we see prices coming down, establishing support, establishing resistance, and then continuing the trend to the downside. So obviously we understand that this is an area where the market can react from and obviously can function as resistance. So taking a look at where price action is right now, from a weekly perspective, what we can see is a couple of weeks. So the last three weeks have been giving us some weeks to the upside as well as maybe some smaller weeks to the downside. But what do we understand about this structure is that we are at some resistance areas. So it makes a lot of sense for us to pay attention to the upside weeks and see that sell side momentum. So when we go down onto a daily now, what we obviously will see is that first big week, that nice reaction from this resistance area. And after we've seen the markets reacting from this area, we've basically seen the markets jumping into some sort of a consolidating structure. So it's not really important at this point in time for us to have all of the same structure that we had previously and all of that stuff. It's not really relevant to us, but what we do need to obviously pay attention to is the fact that we are at resistance and that we are giving some sort of downside reaction. Now from a daily, obviously what we can see is a nice reaction and then obviously this consolidation. Now, once we drop onto the four hour, we obviously will see a lot more clearer structure and then we'll be obviously be able to see what can or oh, what kind of a trading opportunity can we find here on the DXY? So obviously we have this resistance area up here, um, nice resistance area where we see prices obviously coming down, giving us some support, some resistance, and then we see the continuation to the downside. So this is an area where obviously we can see some reactions from. We've seen prices giving us one resistance, a lower high, and obviously we can see that prices are in some sort of a contracting price action where we're seeing lower lows and obviously higher lows. Uh, I mean, lower highs and then obviously higher lows. So we're seeing basically prices contracting. So what we're going to be looking for, guys, on the DXY is just simply for prices to come towards our resistance area. Since we're seeing that markets are in some sort of a consolidating phase, we need to see this price action come up to the top. And then obviously, once we get to these resistance areas here, we need to then observe for our downside continuation or our reversal structures or whatever the case gives us a nice bearish biased setup, whether it's a break and a retest, whether it's a reversal structure, whether it's an ascending structure, guys, all of these things will give us reasons to begin to start looking for some selling trade, selling bias opportunities. What we do need to wait for is for price action to come into our value area and obviously give us our final piece of confirmation, which is our reversal setup before we start looking for those sell bias trading opportunities. So all in all, we're just waiting for prices to come to our resistance areas and then we'll begin to look for those sell bias setups. So that is our analysis on the DXY. Some sell buy setups for next week or for this current week guys let's get into Aussie CAD So guys, we're on Aussie CAD and looking at the price action, we can still see a lot of what we've been seeing from last week. So obviously we had this bigger structure, this larger overall descending structure. And in the structure, we've had our first touch, we've had a nice second touch over here, and we've had a nice third touch as well. What we have seen is a nice, beautiful reaction from this third touch region. And then obviously on our four hour, or if we drop down onto the four hour right now, what we will see is a smaller time frame or smaller descending structure that we've been observing that has been happening obviously within our overall structure. Main reason why we've been looking for some bullish bias price action is because our nice beautiful descending structure has been coming towards our third touch region. So obviously we've seen a nice beautiful bullish reaction from uh, this third touch region. Now what we have here is obviously we have our previous important resistance areas, prices came down, gave us support, new resistance, and we have lower lows. So what we've seen basically is prices breaking above this previous lower structure over here. So what we're simply waiting for is for price action to come down, give us a beautiful inverse head and shoulders, obviously completing this right shoulder where we'll begin to start looking for our risk entries before we start to look for our bullish continuation trades 
to where to the 90 percent rule of the structure so basically where this corrective structure started moving down from. So that's simple enough, nice, beautiful bullish bias setup on Aussie CAD, guys. All we need to be doing here on this price, or, or rather on this chart, is we need to be waiting for price action to come down, first of all, into a beautiful area of value. So our previous support structures, obviously, that were violated to the downside, price is breaking back above, which has now turned into a nice value area. What we need to wait for is for prices to come down into this value area, hopefully in a corrective manner, which will obviously confirm our bullish bias even more but nonetheless once prices are in our value area all we need to be looking for is some sort of a descending structure that gives us a bullish bias maybe a reversal structure at our point of interest that helps us trade this bullish bias but nonetheless we just need to find a structure to be able to trade once prices get into our key value area for those buying opportunities risk to reward ratio on this trade will look absolutely beautiful when it does set up because if we do manage to find this entry over here obviously stops below whatever lower structures we've got there currently and then targeting obviously the 90 percent rule of the structure you guys can see that we're looking to get a nice beautiful seven percent on this trade so risk to reward ratio does look beautiful for our bullish bias all we need to do is just wait for price action to give us a valid buy sell let's get into our next pair guys and that's aussie swiss frank So guys, on Aussie Swiss Frank, we've got very similar price action to Aussie CAD. And what we can see here is just simple price action. Price has created this lower structure. We've broken below this lower structure and broken back above. So obviously looking for some bullish continuation, considering that prices have been coming down to the support region fairly correctively. We've broken below and then broken back above. So obviously showing us that yes, there was no momentum moving to the downside, but all of a sudden sellers came into this market, obviously stopping people, trapping people on the wrong side. So anyone that thought this was going to be a break and retest of this nice, beautiful sell side momentum got trapped on the wrong side of the market. Nonetheless, what we can see is this bullish momentum bringing us back to our neckline or basically our resistance where this smaller corrective structure had started. And all we need to be waiting for is for prices to come back and retest our previous support structures over there. So simple enough, guys, all we're waiting for is for price action to pull down into our key value area here on Aussie Swiss Frank before we start looking for our bullish bias trading opportunities. So simple enough, guys, but nonetheless, still going to require patience for us to wait for prices to pull into this value area and then we obviously look for our bullish biased setups. So guys, going into the next pair that we're going to have a look at, that is AU. We'll start off on the daily with AU and we'll obviously notice how similar all of these uh, price action or all of the price action on these AUD base pairs is. So on AU guys, simple enough, what we have here is our previous support structures, just like AUD Swiss Frank, previous support structures, prices breaking below, breaking back above. But what we can notice if we drop down onto a four hour is that price action has been fairly corrective towards this value area. So we've seen the confluence of price action kind of being very much corrective, giving us a nice resistance trend line as prices have been corrective on an hour four hour. And what we've seen from price action is that we've had some beautiful momentum to the upside that has first of all violated this resistance trend line that we've established that this is our current four hour downtrend. So what price action has shown us is that our four hour downtrend has finally been broken to the upside. What we have here in terms of our levels of structure is we do have prices coming in from the top over here, establishing some support, establishing some resistance, breaking below this area, breaking back above our support. So we do understand that from a structural perspective, this is a key value area where we could be looking for those bullish continuation trades. Why? Because it is our previous support structure that prices did break below and then we've obviously seen prices breaking back above this level of structure. Now, another thing that we can point out about the price action is that we've seen our resistance areas in this point or on this uh, move in during this move to the downside, we finally seen our resistance areas being violated by price to the upside. So we see prices coming up and creating a new higher high above this previous resistance area that obviously is a key resistance area. Now that we've gotten price giving us a nice sign of strength by finally violating our resistance areas, all we're waiting for is for a beautiful corrective structure. So price has given us a support structure. All we need to wait for is for prices to violate the support structure. Once we've violated the support structure, then we obviously can look for our bullish bias price action at our points of interest. So this obviously being our first point of interest and this being our second point of interest down here. If prices obviously come down to these lows here, we will have a much better buy with a better risk to reward ratio than we will get if prices just react from these levels over here. But nonetheless, this is a 
the first key area where we're looking for our bullish reaction from price. This is our second key area where we're looking for bullish reaction from price. Reason being is because we've broken above our resistance trend line and we've got a nice sign of strength by price action, giving us potential for a shift in this trend. So once we see this new higher high forming in our trend, what do we expect after that? We expect prices to create a higher low before we see that continuation of the trend to the upside. So we're not expecting to see prices violating these lower structures here because we've just most recently seen a new higher high from price action. So guys, simple enough, all we're waiting for is for our higher low from AU to form. And once that higher low does form, either at one of these two key uh, support structures over here, we will be looking for our bullish continuation to the upside. Now that is our AU, guys. Let's go on to our NZD CAD and we will start off on the daily just so that we get a reference of our higher time frame structure. So guys, on NZD CAD, higher time frame structure looks very similar to our AU and as well as AD Swiss franc, but unlike Aussie CAD, remember guys, our Aussie CAD bias is we are looking for some bullish bias price action to complete our larger descending structure that we have here. So just coming back to this page, just so that we can look that we do have a nice big bullish bias. On the other hand, guys, on New Zealand dollar CAD, what we do have is a simple, simple bearish bias. So as much as we've got prices violating these support structures here, what we do see is a lot more bearish momentum on our New Zealand dollar CAD. What we can also see from a nice daily perspective. So in other words, we're basically just trading the trend as much as New Zealand dollar CAD and Aussie CAD are correlated to some degree Ultimately, guys, we do need to treat these pairs like individuals because they are individuals and they do trade their own separate different price action. And so what we need to be doing here on New Zealand dollar CAD is trading the price action that we do see. And what we do see from a daily is a nice bearish downtrend. Now, what we have from a four hour is price action coming back to retest. Like we can see our previous support structures over here in this area, we've got resistance. Prices have broken below these previous support structures here. And this is obviously a beautiful retest area for that downside continuation from price action. So what we're waiting for and what we can see is we can see this previous support structure that can function as resistance. And additionally, what we have is a beautiful corrective structure. So let's just go down onto the H1 just so that we can see this corrective structure with a lot more detail that we cut than we currently have here on the four hour. And what we can see is that we've got our resistance area in this in this region over here. So basically momentum to the downside, some resistance over there, new support down there. After we've broken above this resistance, our next key highest area is this area over here. After we've seen this resistance, we've got prices acting at and around the support structure over here. So clearly enough, guys, price do have the or does have the potential to come up and give us our nice, beautiful third touch of structure in our key value area, which we will then start to look for our bearish bias price action from. So simple bias, guys. We've got our first touch of this resistance trend line. We've got our second touch of this resistance trend line. All we need to be waiting for is for price action to come up to our third touch and obviously deliver price action that allows us to sell. Where does our, where is our third touch? Our third touch is also at this resistance area over here, where we obviously expect prices to react because it is resistance. We also do have a new resistance area, horizontal resistance that has recently been formed by price. So what we can be expecting is for price to either give us some sort of a reversal structure or when prices get to this area here, what we will be looking for is for a momentum shift to the downside, breaking back below our previous resistance area, then obviously followed by that beautiful corrective retest of our structure. And once we do see something like this, obviously this would be a beautiful reduced risk entry. But nonetheless, even if we see prices ascending and giving us a nice entry at our risk uh, touch here, guys, we will be looking to take the entry because we can see that price action is warranting us to look for those bearish buy setups. So obviously first place where we're looking for those setups is once prices get to our key value areas up top in this region over here. Obviously, once prices push away from this region over here, we will obviously be looking for our commitment to the downside in form of those bearish continuation flags or whatever bearish bias price action we have after we see this new bearish or downside momentum kick in. Guys, so a beautiful bearish bias on NZD CAD for next week, guys. You guys can see the clear structure. We have reached the end of our analysis. Obviously, if you guys have received the value, if that was intended for you guys in in this beautiful, beautiful session, definitely drop a like. And if you aren't subscribed and you have come to the end of the video, it does mean that you've received some value. So definitely do subscribe so that you don't miss any other future content. And definitely hit the subscribe, the, 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 the notification bell, just so that you get a notification while this analysis is still valid. Because remember, guys, things like analysis are time sensitive. And if you are catching this when the setup has already passed, 
The only value that you're going to get from this video is just the educational analysis of the how to process how we got to these conclusions, but to be able to capitalize and trade these opportunities on your own, you're probably going to miss that opportunity. So definitely guys do subscribe hit the notification bell. Otherwise, this is Tremaine your FX Chasers mentor. Thanks so much for being with me until the end guys. We'll see you guys in the future videos. Have a great week guys. Cheers.